I've nominated uh, Dr Richard Cooper, who is the Head of School for Radiology at Health Education North East. He also undertakes a consultant radiologist role at South Tyneside NHS Foundation Trust. Richard is passionate about education and training and bringing through our future workforce within the NHS. Um, he's very dedicated to the role of head of school, takes it very seriously, providing training as a point of contact um, for all of the trainees across the region. Um, he's also in that role unbiased in terms of the trust that he works for, which is a key characteristic um, of what we look for of a head of school within Health Education North East. Richard led on two pieces of work which involved pulling together um, quite in-depth business cases and scoping exercises. One was to set up a regional Mac lab, which was where trainees could go into a training centre and really look at focused pieces of uh, imaging that wouldn't be available perhaps on a day-to-day -day basis, which enriched the training that they received. The other thing that Richard did was he looked at um, what, we, what our workforce needs for the future and trying to improve patient safety. He set up an ultrasound simulation centre which is available via Teesside University but also available in satellite hubs across the, the region. I nominated the pharmacy team at Northumbria because they are a team who find it easy to come up with new ideas, but they take those ideas and they, they can and they do put them into practice. It's a service that has truly supported our organisation to deliver care in a different way, a way that benefits patients, a way that benefits families and a way that benefits our staff. Um, and whilst their focus is always on quality and safety, they also, as a team, have found a way of delivering on value too, and that's important. Um, so it's very much a team nomination, but there is one individual who is an inspiration behind many of those ideas. So as this is a leadership award ceremony, I want to say a special thank you to Wazim Bagir. Thanks, Waz. I nominated the complex care team um, and the reason we developed the complex care team was because um, the quality and outcomes framework which is one of the ways that general practice gets paid was changing and some of the easier indicators in the COF were actually going to be removed and um, the money was going to be put into two new enhanced services, one for unplanned admission and enhanced services and another one for dementia care. And those two enhanced services meant that we needed to do things very differently in general practice. So rather than doing the 10 minute appointments, what we needed to do was start to think about looking at being proactive in managing people and taking a case management approach to be, be keeping people out of hospital. And some of the traits I think in terms of leadership that I think that they have um, is that they're very, very well respected. They've been there for a year now, uh, but also they respect the, um, the system and the people that they work with. But I think above all, they really have a huge respect for the people that they, they, they are uh, responsible to in terms of the patients. And they're also very loyal to the patients to the point that you know, they'll, they'll fight and they'll argue with me to make sure that they get the right thing for the patients. But the other thing is, is that they're complete advocates in terms of loyalty for their patients. So they will challenge the whole system to get the right thing for the patients. And I think that's unique in healthcare assistants, in nurses, and others who are not doctors who are actually working together to manage very complex care needs. They have a huge sense of duty um, because um, they're so committed to what they want to do and they have so much determination and I can give you so many examples where that determination has got really good outcomes for patients. Um, they're absolutely inspirational and they're just um, they're happy in what they do, they're completely committed and you know when I'm feeling a bit grumpy I'll go and spend some time with them and I just come away really inspired and enthusiastic to think actually there are so many difficulties within the system, there are so many challenges that patients face and these people as individuals come together as a system to manage individual needs. 
The complex care team actually do a lot of social prescribing because as GPs we just couldn't, couldn't do it on our own. So we work with Age UK, we work with the Alzheimer's Society, we work with the Older People's Assembly. Um, they work with a whole load of voluntary organisations within Gates around the practice um, and, and they social prescribe to actually those organisations. But then when we have events, we work jointly with those organisations to, to meet the needs of patients, but also reintegrate um, frail, elderly, isolated people back into the communities. Um, so I think by some doing some of those things, they're, they're demonstrating real leadership working in an environment actually where we don't have adequate resource but what they're doing is actually pulling the resource in around the patient's needs but working with others within the environment to actually make that happen.